All right, so to give you a brief synopsis of what's happened so far, last we read chapters one through two, and in chapter one, we meet Alice and her sister. And I don't know if you've seen the cartoon movie, right? Have you seen it? Yes. So do you remember what, what they were doing at, um, at the beginning of the movie? Um, they were, well, I don't remember much. Okay. So, remember the movie starts out, she's sitting on the, she's sitting on the grass with some um, flowers and her sister mm -hmm. read to her and she's really bored and then yeah. all of a so she dozes off and she sees a white rabbit as a result she gets really curious and she goes after the right rabbit oh yeah i remember that part right so he chases the rabbit she chases the rabbit and then the rabbit goes inside a hole and so out and so Alice, she decided to go inside the hole as well. Right. So she wants to follow after him. But when she gets that, she goes all the way down that hole and she's talking to herself, judging herself for the whole conversation that she's having with herself. But she also mm -hmm. the rabbit. <laughs> and then she finally gets down to, and she gets in this room where she sees some food and a little, little bit of a bottle or a potion. And there's a little door for her to get out of, but she's too little to get out of the door. So mm -hmm. the food, it makes her small enough, but now she has a bigger problem. She can't get the key. Yeah. So she eats a bigger one. Right. She, well, she takes, she takes a little of the potion and helps her to grow up. Mm -hmm. And she ends up <laughs> growing up too big. Mm -hmm. Does that remind you a lot of life? Um. Uh, like they different people like about their highs. Some people are embarrassed of their highs, and some people are just like, ah, eh, they have a normal. We have normal lives. That's one way to look at. It. And then two, on a different level, you can also look at it this way, where um, sometimes we take on a lot. Mm-hmm when we shouldn't take on so much. You have to find the balance of what's too big of a task or it could be that you, a goal that you have and you try to automatically make that goal happen for yourself by trying to much or if you do too little, you don't, you don't really grow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So of course, she starts crying as a result. She's able to come back to a decent size to where she can get out of the doorway. But she ends up meeting some strange creatures like some mice and some ducks. And mm -hmm. she's putting her foot in her mouth or saying the wrong thing. She's not trying to be mean, but not really. what she's saying is kind of not the best thing to say to the different people that with different characters that she meets along the way. Mm -hmm. So where we're picking up was on chapter three, down from dry land, her and these characters that she's met as she's swimming through her years. She this is where we're stopping now that conversation. Okay. All right. So chapter three, a caucus race and a long tail. Tail in Espanol. They were indeed a queer looking party that assembled on the bank. The birds with draggled feathers, the animals with their fur clinging close to them, and all dripping wet, cross and uncomfortable. The first question, of course, was how to get dry again. They had a consultation about this, and after a few minutes, it seemed quite natural to Alice to find herself talking familiarly with them, as if she had known them all her life. And she had quite a long argument with Lori, who at last, who at last turned sulky and would only say, I'm older than you, and you must know better. Sound familiar? Um, yeah. <laughs> and this Alice would not allow, without, without knowing how old it was, and as the Lori positively refused to tell his age, there was no more to be said. Not very nice. 
At last, a mouse who seemed to be a person of some authority among them. Sit down, all of you, and listen to me. I'll soon make you dry enough. Down at once in a large ring with the mouse in the middle. eyes anxiously fixed on it, for she felt sure she would catch a bad cold if she did not get very dry soon. <coughs> in the mouse with an important sir, air. Are you ready? This is the driest thing I know. Silence all around, if you please. William the Conqueror, whose cause was favored by the Pope, was soon submitted to, by the English, who went in leaders, and had been late much accustomed to usurpation and conquest. Edwin and Marker, the Earls of Mercia and North Northumbria, Ah, said the lorry with a shiver. I beg your pardon, said the mouse, frowning, but very politely. Did you speak? Not I, said the lorry hastily. I thought you did, said the mouse. I proceed. Edmund and Morcar, the Earls of Mercy in Northumbria, declared for him. And even Stegan, the patriotic Archbishop of the Canterbury, found it advisable. Found what? said the duck. Found it. The mouse replied rather crossly. Of course you know what it means. Do you know what it means? Oh? Do you know what it means? No. I don't think anybody does. <laughs> I'm starting to think that. <laughs> I know what it means well enough when I find a thing, said the duck. It's generally a frog or a worm. The question is, what did the archbishop find? not noticed this question, but hurriedly went on. Found it advisable to go with Edgar Ath uh, Atheling to meet William and offer him the crown. Williams Norman. Williams uh, I'm skipping lines here. <laughs> Williams mm -hmm. at first was moderate, but the insolence of Normans. How are you getting on now, my dear? It continued to Alice as it spoke. As wet as ever, said Alice in a melancholy tone. It doesn't seem to drive me at all. In that case, said the dodo solemnly, rising to its feet, I move that the meeting adjourn for the immediate adoption of more energetic remedies. The eaglet, I don't know the meaning of half those long words. And what's more, I don't believe you do either, said the eaglet, bent down, his head in his mouth. Some of the other birds tittered audibly. Do you think the mouse knows what it's talking about? No. I don't think so either. Hold on. <sighs> what I was going to say, said the dodo, in an offended tone, was that the best thing to get us dry would be a caucus race. What is a caucus race? said Alice. Not that she wanted to know, but the dodo had paused as if it thought that somebody ought to speak, and no one else seemed inclined to say anything. Why, said the dodo, the best way to explain it is to do it. And as you might like to try the thing yourself, some winter, I will tell you how the dodo managed it. First, it marked out a race course in a sort of circle. The exact shape doesn't matter, it said. And then, all the party were placed along the course, here and there. There was no one, two, three in a way, but they began running when they liked and left off when they liked, so that it was not easy to know when the race was over. However, when they had been running half an hour or so and were quite dry again, the dodo suddenly called out, the race is over, and they all cried around it, panting and asking, who has won? This question the dodo could not answer without a great deal of thought, and it sat for a long time with one finger pressed upon its forehead, the position in which you usually see Shakespeare in the pictures of him, while the rest waited in silence. At last, the dodo said, everybody has won, and all must have prizes. Prizes, quite a chorus of voices asked. Well, she, of course. To the point to Alice with one finger. 
And the whole party at once crowded around her, calling out in a confused way, prizes, prizes. Alice had no idea what to do. In despair, she put her hand in her pocket and pulled out a comfit. Luckily, the salt water had, got, had not gotten to it. And then around his prizes. There was exactly one apiece all around. But she must have a prize herself, you know, said the mouse. Of course, Dodo replied very gravely. What you got in your pocket? He went on, turning to Alice. Only a thimble, said Alice sadly. Hand it over here, said the Dodo. You know what a thimble is, right? Yeah. Okay. They got candy and she had yeah. A thimble. <laughs> then they all crowded around her once more while the dodo solemnly presented the thimble. We beg your acceptance of this elegant thimble. And when it had finished this short speech, they all cheered. But it was her thimble, right? All of us thought the whole thing was very absurd, but they all looked so grave that she did not dare to laugh. And as she could not think of anything to say, she simply bowed and took the thimble, looking as solemn as she could. The compass. This caused some noise and confusion, as the large birds they could not taste theirs, and the small ones choked and had to be patted on their back. However, it was over at last, and they sat down again in a ring and begged the mouse to tell them something more. You promised to tell me your history, you know, said Alice. And why is you hate C and D? Ah, so since you're just joining me with this story, part of the story, C and D refers to cat and dog. Oh. She made them mad. She kept mentioning her cat. She, she has two mm -hmm. cats. Oh. Yeah, and the dog. So they, they uh, got upset. <laughs> <laughs> she added in a whisper, half afraid they would be offended again. Mine is a long and sad tale, said the mouse, turning to Alice and sighing. <sighs> it is a long tale, certainly, said Alice, looking down with wonder at the mouse's tail. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two words to play on words here. Tale is in a story, and then mm -hmm. it's in the mouse's tail. Um. Alice looking down with wonder at the mouse's tail, but why do you call it sad? About it while the mouse is speaking. So right now she hasn't learned the difference mm -hmm. between T A L E and T A I L. Oh, oh. right, you get it now. So yeah, yeah, because she's thinking he's talking about his tail. Um. <laughs> uh, Burry said to a mouse that he met in the house. Let's go to law. I will prosecute you. Come, I'll take no denial. You must have a trial, for really this morning I had nothing to do to the mouse. The cur. Such a trial, dear sir, with no jury or judge would be wasting our breath. I'll be judge, I'll be jury, said Cunning Murray. I'll try the whole cause and condemn you to death. You are not attending, said the mouse to Alice. Severely, what are you thinking of? I beg your pardon, said Alice very humbly. You had got the fifth bend, and I thought I think I had not, cried the mouse, sharply and very angrily. A knot. So a knot, said said Alice, always ready to make herself useful and look anxiously about her. Oh, do let me help you undo it. So here we go again, another homophone. <laughs> I am not, I'm not doing this versus I have a knot in my, in my tie. Oh. So she's thinking he's got a knot somewhere and he's suggesting that I have not finished. Mm. I shall do nothing of this sort, said the mouse, getting up and walking away. You insult me by talking such nonsense. I didn't plead before Alice, but you're so easily offended, you know. The mouse growled in reply. Please come back and finish your story. Alice called after it, and the others all joined in the chorus. Yes, please do. But the mouse only shook its head impatiently and walked a little quicker. What a pity it wouldn't stay, said, 
Tyler Laurie, she was quite out of sight and old Crab took the opportunity of saying to her daughter, my dear, let this be a lesson to you, never to lose your temper. Hold your ma, said the young crab, a little tappishly. You're enough to try the patience of an oyster. I wish I had our Dinah here. I know I do, said Alice aloud, addressing nobody in particular. She had soon fetched it back. And who is Dinah, if I might venture to ask the question, said the Lori. Alice replied eagerly, for she was always ready to talk about her pet. Dinah's our cat, and she's such a capital one for catching mice. You can't think, and oh, I wish you could see her after the birds. Why, she'll eat a bird as soon as I look at it. This speech caused a remarkable sensation among the party. Some of the birds hurried off at once. One old magpie began wrapping itself up very carefully, remarking, I home. The night air doesn't suit my throat. And a canary called in a trembling voice to his children. Come away, my dear. It's high time you are all in bed. Pretext. They all moved off. And Alice was soon left alone. Oh, I wish I hadn't mentioned Dinah. She said to her melancholy tone. Nobody seems to like her down here. And I'm sure she's the best cat in the world. Why do you think they don't like her mentioning Dinah? Uh, because she's there, like she's a cat, and probably they don't like cats. Well, remember what these are they're mice and birds. Oh, because cat also, they even though they eat cats, they also would eat a mouse and some bird, right? So they don't like um Alice, they don't like it when Alice mentions like a cat because they get like fear. Right. Excellent. All right, where are you? Oh, my dear Dinah, I wonder if I should ever see you anymore. And here, poor Alice began to cry again, but she felt very lonely and low-spirited. And a little while, however, she, be she again heard a little pattering of footsteps in the distance. And she eagerly, half hoping that the mouse had changed his mind and was coming back to finish his story. Chapter four. The rabbit sends in a little bill. It was a right rabbit trotting slowly back again and looking anxiously about as it went as if it had lost something. And she said to itself, the duchess, the duchess, oh my dear paws, oh my fern whiskers, shall get me executed as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Where can I have dropped them? I wonder. Alice guessed in a moment that it was looking for the fan in the pair of white kid gloves, and she very good-naturedly began hunting about for them. Nowhere to be seen. Everything seemed to have changed since her swim in the pool in the great hall with the glass table and the little door had vanished completely. Very soon, the rabbit noticed Alice as she was went hunting about and called out to her in an angry tone, Why, Mary Ann, what are you doing out here? Run home and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan. Quick now. And Alice was so much frightened that she ran off at once in the direction to point to the mistake that had been made. Took me for his housemaid, she said to herself as she ran. How surprised he'll be when he finds out that who I am. But I'd rather I better take him his fan and gloves. That that is, if I can find them. And she said this, she came up a neat little house on the door, of uh, which was bright with his name W. Rabbit, and great upon it. She went in without knocking and hurried upstairs in great fear, lest she would meet real Mary Ann and be turned up to be of the house before she had found the fan and gloves. There it seems, Alice said to herself, to be going messages for a rabbit. I suppose that will be sending me messages next. And she began asking this sort of thing that would happen. Miss Alice, come here directly and get ready for your walk. Come in a minute, nurse. But I've got to watch this mouse hole till Dinah comes back and see that the mouse doesn't get out. Only I don't think, Alice, that they let Dinah stop in the house if it began ordering people around like that. 
By this time, she had found her way into a tidy little room with a table in the window, and on it, as she had hoped, a fan and two or three pairs of white kid took up the fan and a pair of the gloves, and she was just going to leave the room when her eye fell upon a little bottle that stood near the looking glass. There was no label. This time was the words, drink me. But nevertheless, she uncorked it and put it to her lips. Do you think that's a smart thing to do? Um, no. Yeah, I probably agree with you. I know something interesting that is sure to happen, she said to herself. Whenever I eat or drink anything, so I'll just see what this ball does. I do hope it'll make me grow large again. For really, I'm quite tired of being such a tiny little thing. It did so indeed, and much sooner than she expected. Before she had drunk half the bottle, she found her head pressing against the ceiling and had hoped the soup to save her neck from being broken. She hastily put down the bottle, saying to herself, That's quite enough. I hope I shan't grow any more. As it is, I can't get out of the door. I do wish I hadn't drunk quite so much. Alas, it was too late to wish that. She went on growing and growing and very soon had to kneel down on the floor. There was not even a room for this. And she tried the effect of lying down with one elbow against the door and the other arm curled around her head. Still, she went on growing. And as a last resource, resource she put one arm out of the window and one foot up the chimney and said to herself, now I can do no more. Huh, what will become of me? Luckily for Alice, the little magic ball had now had its full effect, and she grew no larger. Still, it was very uncomfortable, and no sort of chance of her ever getting out of the room again. No wonder she felt unhappy. It was much pleasanter at home, thought poor Alice, when one wasn't always growing larger and smaller and being ordered about by mice and rabbits. I almost wish I hadn't gone down the rat rabbit hole. And yet, and yet, it's rather curious, you know, this sort of life. I do wonder what can ha happen to me. When I used to read fairy tales, I fancied that kind of thing never happened. And now here I am in the middle of one. There ought to be a book written about me. And then when I grow up, I'll write one. But I'm grown up now. He yeah, added in a sorrowful tone. There's no room to grow up anymore here. But then, thought Alice, should I never get any older than I am now? That would be a comfort one way. Never to be an old woman, but then always to have lessons to learn. Oh, I shouldn't like that. Oh, you foolish Alice. She answered herself, how can you learn lessons in here? Why, there's hardly room for you and never been all for any lesson books. And so she went on, taking first one side and then the other, and making quite a conversation of it all together. But after a few minutes, she heard a voice outside and stopped to listen. Mary Ann, Mary Ann, said the voice, fetch me my gloves this moment. Then came a little pattering of the feet on the stairs. After the rabbit coming to look for her, and she trembled till she shook the house quite forgetting that she was now about a thousand times as large as the rabbit and had to be afraid of it. Presently, the rabbit came up to the door and tried to open it. But as the door opened inwards and was pressed hard against it, that had tent proved a failure. Itself. Now I'll go around and get at the window. That you won't, thought Alice. And after waiting, Till she fancied she heard the rabbit just under the window. She suddenly spread out her hand and made a snatch in the air. She did not get a hold of anything, but she heard a little shriek and a fall and a crash of broken glass, from which she concluded that it was just possible it had fallen into a cube or something of the sort. Next came an angry voice in the, the rabbits. Pat! Pat! Where are you? And then a voice she had heard, never heard before. Sure, then I'm here, digging for apples, Your Honor. 
Digging for apples indeed, said the rabbit angrily. Here, help me out of this. Sounds of more broken glass. What's that in the window? Sure, it's an arm, your honor. He pronounced it arm. <laughs> an arm, you goose. Who ever saw one that size? Why, it fills the whole window. Sure it does, your honor. But it's an arm for all that. That's all. Well, it's got no business there. At any rate, go and take it away. You have an arm sticking out of a window. He says, take the arm away. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? Yeah. There was a long silence after this, and Alice could only hear whispers. Says, sure, I don't like it, Your Honor, at all, at all. Do you coward. And at last, she spread out her hand again and made another snatch in the air. This time... There are two little shrieks and more sounds of broken glass. A number of cucumber frames there must be, thought Alice. I wonder what they'll do, do they'll, uh, I wonder what they'll do next. As for pulling me out of the window, I don't wish they could. I'm sure I don't want to stay in here for any longer. I waited for some time without hearing anything more. At least rumbling of little cartwheels and the sound of a good many voices all talking together. Words. Where's the other ladder? Why? Had to bring one out, but one. Bill's got the other. Bill, fetch it here, lad. Here, put them up at this corner. No, no, tie them together first. They don't really have high enough yet. Oh, they'll do well enough. Don't be here. Here, Bill. Catch hold of this rope. Will the roof bear? Mind that loose slate. Oh, it's coming down. Heads below! Loud crash. Now, who did that? It was Bill, I fancy. Who's, who's to go down the chimney? Nay, I won't. You do it. Then I won't, then. Bill's going to go down. Here, Bill. The master says you've got to go down the chimney. Oh, so Bill's got to go down the chimney, he, has he? Said Alice to herself. Why? They seem to put everything upon Bill. I wouldn't be in place for a good deal. This is narrow, to be sure, but I think I can kick a little. Her foot as far down the chimney as she could. She waited till she heard a little animal. She couldn't guess at what sort it was, scratching and scrambling about in the chimney close above her. Then, saying to herself, this is Bill, a one sharp kick and waited to see what would happen next. The first thing she heard was a general chorus, there goes Bill. Then the rabbit's voice, catch him. You, by the hedge. Then a silence, and then another confusion of voices. What happened to Bill? Uh-huh. Maria. <laughs> what happened to Bill? Um, I couldn't hear you breaking up there. What do you think happened to Bill? Um, what I think ha what I think happened to Bill was that. Um, they probably got hurt going through the chimney. Mm -hmm. You're 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 halfway there. She kicked him out. Oh. She kicked him out of the chimney. <laughs> He's flying in the air. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because there goes Bill, they get trying to catch him. Uh -huh. And then there's silence and another confusion of voices. Hold up his head, Brandy. Now, don't choke him. How was it, old fellow? What happened to you? Tell us of all about it. Last came a little feeble squeaking voice. That's Bill, thought Alice. Well, I hardly know 
no more, thank ye. I'm better now, but I'm a deal too flushed to tell you. All I know is something comes at me like a jack in the fox, and up I go like a skyrocket. So you did, old fellow, said the others. We must burn the house down, said the rabbit's voice, and Anna called out as loud as she could. If you do, I'll set Dinah at you. Dead silence. Instantly, and Alice thought to herself, I wonder what they will do next. If they had any sense, they'd take the roof off. After a what? minute or two, they began moving about again, and Alice heard the rabbit say, A barnacle will do. Was, a barrel full of what? thought Alice. What? But she had not long to doubt. But a shower of little pebbles came rattling at the window, and some of them hit her face. I'll put a stop to this, she thought. Herself and shouted out, You better not do that again, which provoked dead silence. Alice noticed with some surprise that the pebbles were all turning into little cakes. As they lay on the floor, and a bright idea came to her head. If I eat one of these cakes, she thought, it's sure to make some change in my size. And as it can't be larger, it must make me smaller, I suppose. So she swallowed one of the cakes and was delighted to find that she began shrieking directly. As soon as she was small enough to get to the door, she ran out of the house and found quite a crowd of little animals and birds waiting outside. Little lizard Bill was in the middle, being held up by two guinea pigs who were giving it some kind of a bottle. They all made a rush at Alice the moment it appeared, but she ran off as hard as she could and soon found herself safe in a thick wood. The first thing I've got to do, said Alice to herself, wondering about the wood, is to grow to my right size again. In the same to find my way into that lovely garden, I think it will be the best plan. It's an ex excellent plan, no doubt, and very neatly and simply arranged. The only difficulty was that she had not the smallest idea how to set about it. You ever thought like that before? No. So that was something you wanted to do, but you weren't sure how to get started? Yeah. yeah you've been there. We all have. And while she was peering about anxiously about among the trees, a little shot just over her head made her look up in a great hurry. And she was looking down at her with large round eyes and feebly stretching out one paw, try, trying to touch her. Poor little thing, said Alice in a coaxing tone, and she tried hard to look to it, but she was terribly frightened all the time at the thought that it might be hungry, in which case would be very lightly to eat her up in spite of all her coaxing. Hardly knowing what she did, she picked up a little bit of a stick and held it out to the puppy. Whereupon the puppy jumped into the air off of its feet and at once with a yelp of delight and rushed at the stick and made Lee to worry it. Then Alice dodged behind a great thistle to keep herself from being run over and appeared on the other side the puppy made another rush at the stick and tumbled over, head over. He was in a hurry to get a hold of it. Then Alice, it was very like having a game of play with a cart horse, and expecting every moment to be trampled under its feet, ran around the thistle again. Then the puppy began a series of short charges at the beginning stick, running a very little way forwards each time and a long way back and barking horses all the while, till it sat down a good way off, panting with its tongue hanging out of its mouth and its great eyes half shut. Alice, a good opportunity for making her escape. So she set off at once and ran. She was quite tired and out of breath. The bark sounded quite faint in the distance. And yet, what a dear little puppy it was, said Alice, as she leaned against a buttercup to rest herself one of the leaves. I should like teaching it tricks very much if in the right size to do it. Oh dear, I'd nearly forgotten that I'd grown, got to grow up again. Let me see, how is it to be managed? I'll 
eat or drink something or other. But the question is, what? The great question certainly was, what? Out on her the flowers and the blades of grass, but she didn't eat anything that looked like the right thing to eat or drink under circumstances. There was, there was a large mushroom growing near her and as herself. And when she had looked under it, you know, on both sides of it and be, behind it, it occurred to her that she might be as well see what was on the top of it. She stretched herself up on tiptoe and peeked the mushroom. And her eyes immediately met those of a large blue caterpillar that was sitting on the top with his arms folded, quietly smoking a long hookah and taking not the smallest notice of her or anything else. All right, that part we're going to stop here. Okay. Chapter five. I'm going to show okay. Ah, my mouth is dry. I need more water. Whew. How are you liking the story so far? It's good. It gets a little confusing, doesn't it, though? Yeah. There's a most of most of the story is kind of like rhyming. Well, yeah. So when um, Lewis Carroll wrote this book, he didn't teach her a lesson. So I'm, um, I don't know if you remember. You were here when I read this to you last week, I think. Um, this book was written to one of his students. Her name was her name was Alice Alice Liddell, mm -hmm. and her father was a professor, and so he was dealing with what it was like to grow up, and so she's going to learn all sorts of things as she gets older. Things are going to confusing as her as what she's seeing so far she's mm -hmm. try different and new things to figure out her own way and he wrote this story for her to help her understand this is what life will be like for her as she gets older mm -hmm. so there is a lot of rhyming he he was very fond of writing rhymes mm -hmm. a lot of homo homo um homophone too Oh. So I'm going to stop the recording on this part here. <laughs>